everybody. We're joined by Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. We will take questions first from in-person media and then over Zoom. But first, an opening statement from Coach. Yeah, I'm just really proud of my team. Um, you know, being able to play in this Gavit Games has uh, has been great for both conferences. You know, to to go on the road early in the season. Um, to play a team in Georgetown that I think is very much improved. I mean, you guys saw they went out and they've added some real talent uh, to this program. I mean, Spears is fantastic, obviously. Wahab, who's been here. Murray, really talented. Jay Heath being eligible, coming back. A cook, a cook, you know, is such a menace on the defensive end. And, you know, I was just really proud of our team, the way we kind of battled through some adversity in the first half. You know, our, our main guys really weren't playing well. I think at halftime, we were three for 18. Our three guys, our three seniors, Bowie, uh, Barron, and, and uh, Audige. And we were only down two. You know, it was a credit to our bench. I thought Matt Nicholson's minutes in the first half, um, coming in off the bench, his physicality, getting nine points and nine rebounds there in the first half, um, you know, really forced them to go small in the game, you know, and have to go a cook at five most of the second half. But um, Brooks Barnheiser, Julian Roper, those guys came in and really helped us. So terrific win. Obviously, it's early in the season. Uh, we got a lot we got to get better at. Um, you know, a lot of games ahead of us, but you always want to learn through winning, and especially winning on the road. You know, there's been a lot always talked with us about not being able to finish games. You know, when we were at the under four timeout, you know, had a 10, 12 point lead. I thought we just really played well those last four minutes. We executed, we got good shots, we defended, and holding this team to 63 points was a real, you know, goal of ours. They were averaging over 90, you know, and getting 63, um, you know, that, that was a game we knew we could win if we kept the score down. Question, Coach, Chris, the right. Yeah, Chris, Craig, Washington Post. Uh, that run when you came out in the second half really kind of distanced everything. Like you said, you're only down by two at halftime. What was the biggest difference during that stretch? Well, I thought our guards got some layups, you know, which was big. You know, it, it really unlocked Adish. You know, we were able, we, there was a broken play, and, and Ty Berry threw like a, a baseball pass down, and, and Adige got ahead of the floor, and he got a layup. And, and you guys know, man, when you're a good scorer, if you can get a layup and see the ball go in, and then I think he made about four shots in a row after that. I thought Bowie settled down. You know, I, I thought in the first half they had him sped up a little bit. You know, he was rushing his shots. Um, it's tough with a Cook and, uh, and, and Wahab and those guys down there. They're, they're tough to score at at the rim. And I just thought our guards really kind of settled us. And we were able to get the stops. You know, our main focus, this is a hard team to guard, you know, especially when they put those five, that, that small lineup out there. And you got Heath and Murray and Spears and Mazzone and the Cook. You got guys that are spreading the floor and trying to drive and kick. And Spears is hard to stay in front of that. I mean, he's fast. I mean, that guy, seeing it, I, I was very impressed on, pers in, uh, on film. But seeing him in person, he's a hard guy. And to, you know, he got 22 sh uh, points, but we made him take 20 shots. You know, so overall, pretty good job on him. But yeah, I just thought we settled in. I thought we slowed down a little bit and got some good shots, and we were able to get a little distance there during that run. Um, you mentioned how you wanted to slow the game down a little bit. Twice, I think, in the last five minutes, you had possessions on offense where I think you got the shot off with like one second hmm. threes. They went in. Is that like the total example of? what you're trying to accomplish. And yeah, I mean, we were not going to win a game that was going to go up and down against that team. I mean, they, from an athletics perspective, from a depth perspective, you know, if this game got into the 80s, that, that wasn't going to be a game that we were going to win. You know, we had to play to our identity. In our identity, we wanted to be opportunistic. If they were going to press us and trap us and we could beat it and, and shoot early in the clock, we would do that. Uh, but if not, we, we wanted to execute, and we wanted to make that team play extended possessions defensively and hopefully just slow them down a little bit and get it more into like a possession-by-possession possession game. Hey, Coach, when Adige kind of, you know, got into a groove there, how much do you help with that as far as maybe calling things out of dead balls for him, mm -hmm. how his players look for him, or does it happen organic? When you see a player get on like that, as a coach, how do you help him get to his spots. Yeah, I mean, we certainly with, with Bowie and Audige, those are guys, we have a package of things, you know, so when they get going, you know, those, those are guys we want to play through and they're going to have the ball in their hands to make decisions, whether it's scoring or, or to find somebody else. But, you know, it, it's fun to see because Chase is such a streaky scorer. You know, when he can get going, he can really put up points in a hurry and, and certainly second half, he was fantastic. And just one more thing. Yeah, sure. With your rebounding, you guys seem like you're the bully on the boards tonight, and Nicholson played, I think, a season high in minutes. I think it was at 16. Mm -hmm. 
How did you uh, kind of design or your emphasis on being able to dominate the boards? Well, I mean, being gritty and tough has been, you know, two things that we talked about since day one of practice, you know, and, and those are always things that haven't been talked about with our teams. It's been, you know, they, they're skilled and soft and they don't do the dirty work, the things necessary to win games. And, you know, we've really rallied about being a tough-minded, gritty, defensive-oriented, rebounding you know, physical in our own way. You know, we have Matt, who's a big physical guy, but you look at our other guys, you don't you don't see physically imposing guys, but that doesn't mean you can't get in there and dive for loose balls and put your body on the line and get on the glass as a collective unit. And, you know, to see us out-rebound them by 17, you know, if you put the two teams up at the, at the jump circle and you looked at the size and length, you probably would have never uh, guessed that. But it's a testament to the heart and, and the toughness that our guys showed to get in there. I mean, Ty Berry, seven rebounds. Robbie Barron, seven rebounds. Matt Nicholson, nine. It wasn't just one guy. It was a lot of guys getting in there and rebounding the ball. How many corner threes did you hit? And what would you attribute to being so wide open? Did they oversuck? Did your pen was your penetration too much? What happened? Well, the, the whole thing was, don't you dare try to score on a cook at the basket. <laughs> if you drive in there and he's there, you better pass the thing out. And they didn't listen to me a couple times, and you saw what happened. It got wiped out pretty clean. So our whole thing was to try to collapse them. We knew that a cook and Wahab were going to be guys that were going to want to be shot blockers. And we wanted to be smart. If we collapsed our defense, we want, instead of throwing up a really low percentage shot over those guys, we wanted to kick the ball and be ready to shoot. And, and that certainly was definitely one of the game plans. And making 14 threes was huge tonight. Coach, I know with um, Matt Nicholson playing so much time, Titus didn't play that much. But can you talk a little bit? Briefly about what do you expect from Titus this year as a graduate student? Yeah, I mean, just to be solid and be a vet. You know, I mean, he's he's been he, today was his birthday. He's 24 years old. You know, I just want him to play like a 24 year old. You know, someone who's played six years. He's been coached by really good coaches. He's played in a lot of big games. You know, throughout his career, we want him to be an experienced guy because Matt is a guy who you know he's the last couple of years he's sat behind two really good players and Pete Nance and, and Ryan Young, and and now he's getting his opportunity. That's what's fun. You know, you see someone who's kind of been working and, and, and not having an opportunity the last couple of years and just stuck with it, you know, got in the weight room, got stronger, got in the gym. And now that his opportunity is here, he's really taking advantage of it. And we just need those two guys to be themselves. You know, we need them to be really good defensively. We need them to protect our basket, rebound, and then opportunistic offensive players. You know, and you saw that with Matt. He had a couple dump offs, a couple put stick backs. Titus had a really big bucket, I thought, with one on the shot clock there late in the half. And, you know, we just want those guys to be kind of a collective two-headed monster that gives us good minutes at that position. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you.